Greetings, everyone. I'm Dr. Lisa Gunderson. I'm known in my community as Dr. Lisa and to my former students as Dr. G. I want to thank you for taking the time to look at this video as we discuss racism for about five minutes. <laughs> we begin by thinking again about our territorial acknowledgements. I am coming to you from the Kwangan speaking territories, specifically of the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. And native-land.ca is a site I encourage you all to go to. As you do, thinking about the way that the territories, what they mean to you, understand why these acknowledgements are happening. So for me, understanding that I am on lands of people who've been caring for them for millennia, who truly understand systemic racism and have been disrupting it, dismantling it, and attempting to abolish it. I'm so humbled to be able to work here and to live here. What is your relationship to your territory? And if you don't know which territory you're on, please take a moment to take a look at this mobile app and wherever you are, please learn about that history. Before talking about being an anti-racist counselor, oftentimes we need to have some clear definitions on what we even mean by racism, anti-racism, racial prejudice. And that's what we're gonna be doing for the next few minutes here. So when we talk about racial prejudice, we are talking about a set of discriminatory or derogatory attitudes that anybody can have about any other group regarding perceptions they have about their race and or skin color. That is gonna be systemically different than racism. When we speak to racism, we're talking about a marriage. And this is something that Ibram Kendi speaks to. I like his definition because he speaks to the idea that racism is a marriage between racial ideology racist ideology and racist policy. And when those two come together, they create inequities that are normalized. As Dr. Ibram X. Kendi explains, a racist policy is any measure that produces or sustains racial inequity. So when we have two groups like this and one here versus one here, we understand that there is something that is going wrong. By policy, he doesn't just mean regulations and guidelines. He means those written and unwritten laws and rules and procedures. So I want you to think about that in the context of counseling. What are the unwritten laws that we have been taught? And if you think about the, where psychology has come from, how many of us were taught primarily about the fact that the psychologists and the theories that we learn are based in Eurocentric space, based in white male, certain class of space, right? So it's very important for us to think about the things that we've learned, the things that we may need to unlearn. In addition to that policy, those ideas, we have this racist ideology that suggests one racial group is indeed inferior to or superior to another in any way. And that could be in a certain communication style that's brought into the counseling space, the way that one interacts, the way that one collects information or assesses. All of these things are influenced by a certain ideology of which group is superior or not. And when you see that marriage, that's what gives us systemic, institutional, or structural racism. And indeed, we know that that exists in the counseling arena in space. So when it comes to racism, if that's here, what is anti-racism? Well, being nice is not equal to being anti-racist, as Dr. Robin DiAngelo states. Becoming anti-racist as Andrew Ibrahim has spoken to, is a process. And as I've mentioned before, and you can't be Switzerland, it's a journey for your life, your professional and your personal life. So as you can see, 
there are a variety of things that are going to happen going from a fear zone to a growth zone. And this is particularly important when we think about what do we know and understand about ourselves and our journey in terms of anti-racism as it impacts our counseling spaces. Remember that when it comes to anti-racism, we're talking about racial equity instead of hierarchy. We're talking about the idea that problems are in power and policies as opposed to groups of people. So when we talk about the fact that if all persons underutilize counseling services, instead of looking at the people as an issue, what is it in our power, in our policies, in our historical understandings, our current understandings that lead to about people not seeking out help. When it comes to anti-racism, we also confront racial inequities. We don't allow racial inequities to persevere. And when we look at power, and remember we have that power space in that counseling room, that we have to think about how are we redistributing and sharing it equitably with our clients. I want to encourage all of you, as you are on the pathway to learning about becoming and journeying of being an anti-racist counselor, that it is not a destination, that it is indeed a process and a journey, that we all are gonna be learning how we engage, how we are going to have spaces that are gonna be more equitable. Amanda Gorman spoke on January 20th, and I just want to leave you with a quote that she said, for there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. I see the light in all of you, and I hope you are brave enough to see it yourself and know that this journey that you're on to becoming an anti-racist counselor that you can do that. Thank you so much.